welcome back to the Brick Invitational Tournament. As you can see, I'm here with John Main. John, one of the stars of the previous game. So John, you were telling me it's a complete team effort to get the win today. Oh yeah, big time. We just got to move the puck and just be a good teammate and you'll, you'll go far away. Speaking of good teammates, your teammate Parker McMillan in the first, first game of this series had a hat trick. What does that do for you guys on the bench oh, seeing just, somebody perform like that? Oh yeah, that just gives us like, that just makes us feel good inside and good for him. Like he, he's a phenomenal player, he's great. Passes the puck hard, he's just a beauty. He's a beauty for sure. Yeah. And speaking of being a good teammate and trying to develop your game, we were talking a little bit. You said you build your game after the new all-star, Conn Smythe Trophy winner, Kale McCarr. Yeah. What does that mean to you? What does that mean have, seeing someone like Kale McCarr play the defensive position? Oh, well, it just it just proves that anyone can do anything that he can. He's a great D-man. Like, you can do anything that he can if you put your mind to it. You have to be able to skate as well as he does, though. Oh, and yeah. that's, that's yeah. quite a task. Is that something you focus on yeah. when you're practicing and training so what does that mean like for you what does good skating mean does it mean having balance speed or is it a combination of everything um yeah it's a combination of everything what so what would you say is your best skill that would make you play like Cal McCart mm, probably my blocking shots blocking shots sacrificing the body giving it all up for the team yeah. so you have one more game a little bit later today What's the pregame ritual when you're getting ready for a game? Well, I'm the music guy. I run the music, but usually I just go get half my gear on, visualize what I'm about to do, and then I go put it to work out on the ice. So if you're running the jukebox, what's the first thing coming off the speakers? First song. Mm, probably Tur uh, Turks. It's my, it's my friend's probably favorite song in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. But anyways, thank you so much for joining us, John. I hope you have an enjoyable rest of your tournament here on this West Edmonton Mall ice. I'm going to let you head on out. Let you enjoy the rest of your day here in Edmonton, Alberta, West Edmonton Mall. Sweet. Thank you. See ya. And all right, folks, if you're listening at home, we are about to head into our anthems. So we'll be back shortly here on ASTV. <laughs>
Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Tournament. I'm Mike Gould here on ASTV alongside Conrad Krausert on this Thursday afternoon, and we're ready to get started for this game between the Boston Junior Bruins and Team Brick Alberta. Conrad, how are you doing? I'm doing great, but honestly, I'm not doing as great as Team Brick Alberta. Team Brick Alberta has already gotten off to a 2-0 start in this tournament, including an earlier game taking place not on the ice here at West Edmonton Mall, but over at our secondary ice sheet. Took a 3-0, oh no, that was at this ice. We weren't doing that game, but it was here at West Edmonton Mall. Take a 3-0 win over the Manitoba Junior Ice. That was yesterday, and they are taking on your Junior Bruins. The Junior Bruins, this is their second game of the day. They did have a game earlier on our other sheet, and that was a 5-2 loss to Toronto Pro Hockey. A great team that both teams have faced, but looking, obviously, to win this one. Well, Conrad, I tell you what, looking around here, there are a lot of people here at West Edmonton Mall. This place is packed, it is buzzing, the atmosphere is palpable, and we are ready to get going for the first period between Alberta and Boston. A true uh, cross-continental matchup here at the Brick on this Thursday afternoon. And it's not just Team Alberta fans. You'd expect being here at West Ed to be a lot of Team Alberta fans, but no, there is a big contingent that has come to us from Boston to support their bees. Oh, absolutely. There's fans uh, surrounding this rink at both ends of the ice. And we can tell you about our starting goaltenders in this one. And for Team Alberta, it's Baron Bruinsma. He has the name Bruins in his name, but he's playing for Team Alberta. He's wearing number 32 in black to our left as the game is underway. We'll get you the information on the Boston goaltender in just a moment. Boston with the puck to start things off. It comes up to the Bobrov at the point. He gets it down low for Watson, who scored a goal yesterday, and it was a thing of beauty. Now Boston forces a turnover, a big hit thrown there by Prudovsky. More of a collision than anything, but Prudovsky absolutely came out on top. Now Team Alberta picks up the puck in their own end and they advance it up the far side boards, but Boston turns them back and that's McCann from a sharp angle. That shot was knocked aside there by Bruinsma. Now Bobrov sends it down low and gets the return feed to the left faceoff circle. Gets it up top for Watson who goes D to D up at the right point. A drive there is blocked on route by Team Alberta and they'll look to get it out. They can't, McCann with a good effort there to keep it alive. Now Boyle comes in to help out. Boyle at the left circle, being hassled there by Team Alberta, but Boyle looking to retain control of that puck. It's still loose along the near side boards. Now it comes up to the point. Kept alive there by Emmett Ofiro. And now it's sent down low where Team Alberta picks it up. And on it there is Kasten Gay, who gets it up to the point, but not out. Looked like the Boston player might have closed his hand on the puck, but nevertheless, we play on. And now there's a shot from a sharp angle. Another try. That Deflected off Bruinsmann, went high over the net. Puck up for grabs in the near side in the Team Alberta zone. Lots of excellent pressure by Team Boston so far early on in this first period. And again, Team Alberta trying to clear, and finally they do so. They send it all the way down the ice. Just hard enough to cross the goal line. Four nice and call with 10-10 remaining in this first period. So a net for the Junior Bruins is number 60, Brody Dickinson. Brody was in net for their first game, a win. Only allowed two goals on 19 shots. See what happens here. Yes, indeed. Brody Dickinson wearing number 60 in net for Boston. A very recognizable face from yesterday's games. Now Team Alberta chips the puck out to center ice and back on it for Boston is Drew McElhaney. McElhaney up ahead, finds his man Watson on the far side. He advances it forward, and now down the near side, that pass didn't quite reach Capanali. Back the other way comes Blazevic. Blazevic sends it down low, and after it there for Team Alberta is Jet Evans. Evans battling for the puck along the far side boards. It comes up top, where streaking off the bench to keep it in is Jevin Morrison. Morrison sends it down low and stands tall at the blue line to keep it alive. Now on it is Deno. Deno shot slides just wide of the goal, and Boston there to pick it up, but they can't get it out. And it's kept into the point there by Morrison. Only for a moment though, here comes Boston back the other way. Down the right side into the middle comes Brackett. Brackett tried a toe drag there, but lost the handle on it. And now here's Team Alberta down the right side, it's Butterwick. 
Butterwick, Butterwick sends it down low. Boston gets there first, rimming it around the far side boards and up to the point. Bounces off a skate and stays alive. Butterwick with a shot. It deflects down. Another backhand there by Wyatt Jollies. Was sticked aside there by the goaltender, Brody Dickinson. Down low, both teams trying to find that puck. It comes away to Boston. They get it out to center ice and now back on it for Team Alberta is Lindbergh. Lindbergh's long drive knocked aside there by Dickinson and Boston takes control one more time. Prodovsky down the left side. Prodovsky streaking after that puck. Team Alberta cuts it off and now it's sent around the far side where keeping it in for Team Boston is Anderson. Now Team Alberta keeps it in. Team Alberta trying to get it out and they can't. Spacito turned him back. Luke Spacito wearing number 61 and kept it alive for a moment. Now it comes out to center ice where Boston's on it one more time. On it now is Bobrov. Bobrov making moves but lost control of the puck for a moment. Now he gets it out to center ice where Chudik takes control and dumps it back in. Here comes Boston again. Boyle has some room. Boyle streaking down the left side. Fires a shot and a shoulder save made there by Bruinsma. And the, the loudest ovation we've heard of this tournament so far. Was just about to say the Ice Palace on its feet for that save. Now a long drive, deflects high. Oh, and it just goes wide. Alberta now trying to find the opening goal in this one. Excellent activity so far, and the crowd is really into it. Just listen. Down low, Team Alberta still trying to get the puck free. Boston trying to take it away. They're jamming away in the far side corner, and Team Alberta trying to pick it up. Boston takes it one more time, and that was McElhaney who got it forward. Now Alberta turns it back, but they had to tag up. And now it's Lions down the left side, firing a shot. Oh, and a glove save made there by Bruinsma. Maybe the most impressive glove save I've ever seen from a shot outside the blue line. And that one had some real flutter to it, and it also dipped right before it got into his glove. You know who plays center field like that a few too many times? Was Mike Smith, not with the <laughs> Oilers, with the Calgary Flames. He seemed to have to do that two or three times a game with the Flames. Now it's Harvey down the right side. Harvey with speed. Oh, listen to this crowd. They're super into it. This is just excellent atmosphere for hockey. Lindbergh keeps it in. Down the left side, it's Jollies banging away at that puck. Jollies lost control. And now Boston down the right side. With it there is Watson with speed. Watson on goal to save. Oh, it's loose. And now covering it up is Bruinsma. Watson has his pads or has his hands in the air. The referee does not signal referee, a goal. No, now he does no, signal no. a goal. It's a goal for Boston. They lead one to nothing off a crazy sequence. It looks like it's number 34. That's going to be Campanale. Campanale taking the first spot of the flyby. We'll see who they give credit to in the building. Wow. This is just a tremendous game of hockey already, and we're not even six minutes in. The atmosphere here just infectious. So just I do have to wonder though, if we were watching an NHL game, if that goal would have been blown off due to intent to blow the whistle. Yeah, honestly, I was surprised that they didn't blow the play dead sooner, uh, but that was the call that was made. And, and they, they were jamming away at it, and it didn't look like they had jammed more than maybe two or three times before Watson put his arms up in the air, seeming to think that it had crossed the line. And then the referees quickly after that made the signal, so. Seems it was a relatively open and shut case, and it's Boston who leads one to nothing. We still await the official scoring announcement. Robbie McCann loses the draw for Boston at the neutral zone, and now Team Alberta trying to advance it forward. Uh, the far side there, Lane Huscroft advances it forward, but now Boston sends it right back out to the neutral zone. Here's the announcement. And indeed, Conrad, you're right, it is Campanale who gets credit for this first goal. As Boston knots the net off its moorings in the offensive zone, the faceoff will likely come outside the blue line. Mike, I hope this isn't a sign of things to come as they're signaling over to the ice crew that this might have become an issue throughout the day with that net coming off its mooring. We did a tournament down in Calgary where we saw over the series of four days 13 goals disallowed because of one of the next coming off its mooring. Yes, indeed, and hopefully not an issue here as down the right side comes Forrestal into the middle, and getting his glove on that puck was Brody Dickinson. And Brody Dickinson, 
rocking a completely different set of pads and helmet. I, I know some goaltender families, and that's the number one complaint, is the price of goaltending gear. So that's uh, a supportive family and community. Brody Dickinson easily uh, winning the early sweepstakes for the best dressed goaltender competition. As the music continues to play over the game for a moment, felt like we were in lacrosse or something for a moment. And now on the far side, both teams jamming away at that puck. Yeah, I'm half expecting the what's he got nothing chance to break out. <laughs> now Boston trying to push that puck forward up the far side boards. They take it away. Team Alberta trying to send it forward, and they do. It's now below the goal line. Boston looking to break things out. It comes up the near side. Team Alberta causing some problems along the boards. Now Boston has it again up the near side with it. Comes Boyle. And now it's Morrison on it for Team Alberta. Morrison spinning away from Boyle. Looks up the ice and finds his man up the near side. That's Van Weyes. Van Weyes' pass was just out of the reach of Evans. And now on it is Lyons. Lyons was limping pretty good yesterday. So I wonder how he's feeling. Took a couple shots off the skates as a D-man. Well, all we need is some Tigers, and we'd have a Wizard of Oz situation on our hand with Lions, Tigers, and Bears. Oh, my. Oh, my God, Mike. It's usually me with the puns. That <laughs> one was. <laughs> I couldn't resist. As the puck is free inside the Team Alberta zone, Boston takes it away. It's Campanale who sends it down low in the direction of Watson. Team Alberta takes over. On there is Morrison. Morrison advances. Boston forced a turnover. Here's a chance. A shot from a sharp angle there was deflected wide of danger by Team Alberta. Up the far side, Team Alberta looking to break it out. They can't get it past the red line though, and Boston will look to bring it right back in. Watson down the right side, stops up, hands it off to Brackett. Brackett falls to the ice, no call on the play, and now here comes Team Alberta. Morrison flips it in, goes off for a change as Brody and Tignani goes in on the forecheck. And Tignani trying to steal that puck away. Boston finds it first, and they rim it up the far side boards. Boston trying to escape the zone. Team Alberta trying to prevent them from doing that. And Antonani had it fall off his stick, backing him up. Now in front, a pass, and Team Alberta couldn't get it on goal. Now a slot shot from the point there by Harvey, deflected just wide. Up top, the puck is kept in there by Bodker. Now it's cleared out to center ice, and Harvey back on it for Team Alberta. Almost a bit of confusion there at the Team Alberta bench. As one of the players had to step back on. It looked like they might have been called for too many men for a moment. Yeah, I was supposed to come off. Harvey was supposed to come off, and he was supposed to come on. But smart play by Blazmovic. And now here comes Team Boston. It's McCann down the left side, being hassled from behind by Chudik. Now it's picked up there by Bodker. Now Boston still with the puck in the offensive zone. It's sent down low, and McCann goes after it. McCann. Couldn't quite find it, but the puck is turned over to Boston nevertheless. Now Alberta steals it right back, and they look to skate it out to center ice. That's Castingay leading the rush. Castingay fires a shot that flutters into the near side corner. It was likely blocked, and now Boston looking to clear the zone. Castingay, one of the tallest players in this tournament, using that reach very effectively as a centerman. I wonder who's taller, Castingay or uh, Carter Watson for Boston. It'd Probably be. both about the same. Yeah, they're, pretty, they're, they're pretty tall. Now, there was a close call on the line change for Boston. Now a shot by Team Alberta that was blocked. Might have been friendly fire. It might have bounced off an Alberta player. Now a turnover. Here's a chance. It's down the right side. Now into the middle. A shot there, and the Team Alberta player was decked in the last moment before he could get it on goal. No call of the play, and now Boston covers it up for a faceoff. I think it was mostly stick on stick, but there was a little bit of body contact there. Incidental contact. Yeah, I think that's the terminology we're looking for, and nevertheless, the referees making the call with to make no call with 1.51 to play in this first period. I got to say, I'm going to point out some of our fans in attendance here from the Bruins side. They got the handmade signs. Oh, I love it's it. It's always great at I love this it. age yeah, group yeah, when yeah. you see some of those coming it's out. It's terrific. It's just terrific. And now Team Alberta back on the puck at center ice. With it there is Ant Morrison. Morrison cuts in, but they're gonna say that Antignani was just a little bit offside. Antignani has uh, already earned an all or a game star for during this tournament. Wearing number 91. Uh, you know, Conrad, some numbers, you just call them superstar numbers, and 91 is one of them, absolutely. 
Now Jolly's from the left side. That shot deflected wide. Antoniani after it on the forecheck, but Boston takes over. McCann gets it ahead, and now Boston will look to bring it out to center. Watson down the right side, pass it to Campanale, but it was out of his reach. And Team Alberta brings it out to safety. Antoniani down the right side, gets it in deep. And on the forecheck, Boston trying to clear the zone they can. It's kept into the left point there by Lindbergh. Set down low as one of the final minute of play in this first period. Boston looking to find that puck. Alberta gets there first. Castingay's shot is blocked. The rebound was loose for a moment, but now Boston takes over and they'll get it out to center ice. As it's Brackett through the middle who dumps it in. Just wide of the goal, no icing of course. And back on it for Team Alberta is Blazevich. He gets it ahead and on it now is Castingay. Pass is picked off by Spasito who hands it off to Pradovsky. Pradovsky pokes it forward. Pradovsky below the goal line. Now backhands it in front. Here's a chance. Spasito couldn't get it on goal. Now McCann with a shot and a shoulder save made there. Nice stop by Bruinsma. Puck down low in the Team Alberta defensive end. First to it there was Forrestal, but he's pressed along the far side boards. And now on it for Team Alberta is Castingay, who gets it out to center ice, where Bobrov waits for it. And that'll do it for the first period of action. With no score, no, pardon me, Boston scoring the one goal in that first period with Braden Campanale receiving credit after a jam play at the front of the net. Five to two, the shots in favor of Boston. So Mike, you mentioned number 91 being a superstar number. I also think 99, of course. 87. 97. 97. Who is the name that comes to mind for you when you hear number 91? There's a lot. Um, there are definitely a lot of players. Mine immediately goes to Steven Stamkos. Of course, Stamkos. I, oh, I'm of the vintage that when I was really growing up and playing hockey, Steven Stamkos was the name. Yeah. That, you know, it was brand new into the league. He was scoring 50 goals, 60 goals in his first couple of seasons, and it was ridiculous. But, um, but when you talk to any of these players, the name they mentioned certainly wears number 97 here in Edmonton. Of course. A lot of these players, especially the centers, modeling their game after the great Connor McDavid. He is an outstanding player, and we're in his home city. Here at West Edmonton Mall, and we're so thrilled to be with you here on ASTV, bringing you the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Tournament. Conrad, you had the right idea yesterday bringing sunglasses, uh, and boy, oh boy, you need them today. Oh, you do. We, have a, we had an overcast day yesterday, so the mosaic came and went, but it looks like we got nothing but sun. So, as I mentioned yesterday, everyone always refers to the Hockey Hall of Fame as the Cathedral of Hockey, but I think we need to rename the Ice Palace the Cathedral of Hockey. <laughs> Get some actual stained glass up on the ceiling. I think I'd, I'd have fun with that one. I just uh, took a look at Brown, the number 86 referee out on the ice right now, and he's squinting. <laughs> he's squinting, and I would be too yep. if I was out there having to deal with all of this, this, uh, this pattern on the ice. It looks like, I mentioned yesterday, it looks like some sort of stained glass pattern that's being projected on the ice surface. You almost need to go back in time and get that old oakley tinted visor that Alex <laughs> Ovechkin started his career with. Yeah. They've seen, we still see some play players wearing that. I think Bo Byram was wearing that in the playoffs with the Colorado Avalanche. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a distinctive look. We also saw players back in the day wearing yellow visors. I believe that was uh, maybe players who had an eye condition or something like that. And they came back and they were wearing, I think uh, the, the name that comes to my mind is uh, Eric Weinrich, wore it for the St. Louis Blues back in the day. And certainly a distinctive look. Yeah, and, you'll, and you'll actually kind of notice some of the players who do wear the fishbowl, as it's called, the visor and face mask combination, they've got some extra face paint on. Oh, it yeah. Seems like it's amplifying the glare. The glare the would be crazy with one of those on. Now we're back underway in this second period. Glad to have you with us on ASTV. One more time, it's Mike Gould with Conrad Krauser here on the broadcast on this beautiful Thursday afternoon in the West Edmonton Mall Ice Palace. It's a beautiful day in many ways, and my goodness, are the fans here ever loving this game, which has Boston leading by a one to nothing score early in this second period. Comes up top, Archibald with a chance. Archibald fires through traffic, and it's blocked there by Team Alberta. So speaking about the fishbowl, I've already heard of a couple players having their parents go up between games if they're wearing one of the visor fishbowls and getting them a cage. Just Not a bad idea. Bad. Hey, there is a sport check in this mall. Well, absolutely might as well take advantage, right? For sure. 900 stores in this mall. It's absolutely unbelievable how much there's, there is to choose from. You can spend an entire day walking up and down. And now Boston with the puck in their own zone. It's Welby 
who carries it down the right side, pass through the middle, deflects off a skate. And that's a solve for Boston, who's, got, who's caught well offside. Face off upcoming in the neutral zone with 10.54 to play in this second period. So both these goaltenders, your traditional left-handed catching goaltenders, we made mention of it. I think we have more right-handed or more right-handed catching goaltenders than I'm used to, certainly. In this Absolutely, tournament. yeah. I mean, you look in the NHL, the right-handed catching goaltenders are few and far between. I think the highest profile one is probably Pavel Francouz, who just won the Stanley Cup as the backup for the Colorado Avalanche. Frankie. Yeah, he's great. Um, he's a story who a lot of these goaltenders out here should try to aspire to. Missed an entire season with two hips that he needed to have surgically, fi surgically fixed. And he came back this season and played a bunch of games and helped win them the Stanley Cup. That's the kind of perseverance story that everybody should be really listening to. And now Ofiro with a chance in the offensive zone. A long shot, they score! Tipped in front, Chris Welby. It's 2-0 Boston. I'm not seeing any protest from the Alberta players. That tip did look close to the crossbar. But, and it, it almost looks like the officials are gathering around to talk a little bit about it, but it looks like this goal, as with the other one, will stand. If anything, I wonder if they were just discussing who got it. You know, what the, what the number was of the player in front who got his stick on that puck. And indeed it was Chris Welby who deflected that long range shot. I believe that was taken by Sam Archibald up top. And uh, 19 to 91 on the goal there. That's. That's what every hockey team is looking for now with those point shots. You're looking not for the tip right in front of the net. You're looking for that tip in between the hash marks, the high tip. And look out as down low, a big collision inside the Team Boston zone. And now Team Alberta on the puck. Shudek trying to find it, and Boston steals it right back. Skating with it there is Brackett. He hands it on off to Campanale, who gives chase down the left side. Now back on it for Team Alberta is Jevin Morrison. Here's the goal call. We'll interrupt, because here's a chance. Chudik down the left side in front, and unable to get a stick on that one was Huscroft. And indeed, they do give the goal to Chris Welby on that play. And now, streaking through the middle comes Brackett. Brackett down the right side, tries to make a move. Lost his handle for a second, now got it back, and couldn't get the shot on goal. The team Boston fans want a penalty, it won't come. Had his stick lifted at the last moment, I don't think there was much there. And now down back the other way comes Team Alberta. That pass to Mill Caston Gay back hands it on goal. And sticking it aside there was Dickinson. Up top, the puck comes. And it's received cleanly. A long shot there, bounces on goal. And covering it up there was Brody Dickinson off that long drive by Rocco Blazevic. Yeah, the Team Alberta players trying to get into quick changes here in this long change second period. And you will see the puck bouncing a little bit. As you saw, we had a short intermission, not a flood, not even a scrape. Absolutely. We have the ice resurface between the second and third periods here at West Ed. And it definitely creates a different dynamic in that second in that third period. And now look out. And there's going to be a penalty on the play. It's going to go against Team Boston. So Team Alberta will have its first power play of the game here with 8.48 to play in second period. He's being charged number 33, Alexander Bobrov, who actually has been a standout to me. Not necessarily as much on the score sheet, but definitely a presence that you notice. Absolutely, and now Team Alberta with a chance to make an impact here, get on the scoreboard. And Conrad, if Team Alberta scores here, West Edmonton Mall is going to erupt. My goodness, are the fans going to go absolutely wild? There's so many of them, and You'd have to believe most of them are cheering for the hometown team. Yeah. And there's not a, like, yesterday we had space up in the upper deck. Oh, there's none. N none, none today. Absolutely Shoulder none. to shoulder. Yeah, it's absolutely full here, and we'll see what happens as Morrison goes D to D over to the right side for Lindbergh. Lindbergh hesitates and dishes it off. Here's a chance. Shot from a sharp angle there is taken away on route by Emmett Alfiro. Long shot by Boston all the way down the ice on goal. And they've changed the assist on that first goal, uh, or pardon me, that second goal for Team Boston to Emmett Offiro, uh, who was the defenseman who shot the puck from the point. Pardon me, it was not Sam Archibald, as I said on the broadcast earlier. It'll be Welby from Offiro, the goal play. 
Now look out, here's the chance for Team Alberta down the left side, a shot there, the rebound, and making the save both times is Brody Dickinson. Brody Dickinson not choosing to just keep his glove pinned to the ice to freeze that puck, taking the puck off the ice completely. That is a, I'm not, I'm not gonna call it by the book. <laughs> That's definitely his own flair. I like it. It's worked for him so far, and now Team Boston wins the draw in their own zone. And they send it all the way down the ice. It's back on it for Team Alberta is Tyler O'Gorman, wearing number four. O'Gorman makes the first pass over to the near side. It catches the man in the skates. That's Deneau who spins away and now carries it up the near side. Deneau with it, going slowly and now stops up, finds O'Gorman up top. O'Gorman over to the right side, kept in there by Bodker. Bodker down low, here's a chance in front. Team Alberta couldn't get it on goal. Team Alberta trying to jar it loose, and they do. With it, there is Evans. Evans up top for Bodker, returns it. Evans down the right side, back up top. Bodker had it jump over his stick, and now Boston brings it out to center with their Campanale, and he elects to just fire it down the ice at the end of a shift. Man, what these uh, Boston Bruins defenders are gonna need a sit in one of our platinum sponsor whirlpools after this game. <laughs> Bumps and bruises a plenty from blocks. Conrad, you're uh, you're towing the line nicely there over there. <laughs> but well done. Here's Watson through the middle. Watson cuts to the right, fires a shot that hits the Beatles back in time. Sticker on the far boards, right in the middle of the A. And now Team Alberta goes D to D below their own goal line. Beatles back in time. That would be something. Jubilations puts on some great shows in and around Alberta. Yeah, there's a dinner theater right in the middle of West Edmonton Mall. Isn't that crazy? My goodness, love to check that out at some point. Now down low in the Team Alberta zone. Boston trying to cause some problems. A big collision there. Now Boston tries to jam it home, but getting on top of that puck is Bruinsma. There's a little bit of frustration, a little bit of getting to know each other right in front of that Team Alberta net, or Team Brick Alberta. But, uh, Cooler heads prevail and both teams skate away without sending a man to the box, which... Usually the preferable notion for both teams involved in those scrums, uh, avoiding taking any penalties, even if they're offsetting, you lose one of your players, and that can really hurt your team flexibility. Now a shot there goes just wide, and Team Alberta there to retrieve it down the near side. They turn it back, and now Boston trying to force a turnover here in the offensive end for them. Kept into the point by McCann, but that pass ricocheted off the skate of Antoniani. And now Boston dumps it back into Team Alberta territory. Back on it there is Jollies, who hands it off over to Old Gorman. Kept into the point there by Irwin, who sends it down low. And now Team Alberta back on it. Oh, almost a turnover there, but O'Gorman recovers it. And Team Alberta brings it out to center ice. Down the left side and dumping it in there was Jollies. No icing, although the goaltender certainly wanted a call there. And now Team Alberta trying to force a turnover, and they will. On it there is Harvey, pardon me, Evans. Over to the left side, it's taken there by Antoniani, who gets it up top for Harvey. Harvey couldn't quite keep it in, and the referee's gonna call a delayed offside here, so Team Alberta has to tag up. Boston dumps it in, back on it for Team Alberta is Harvey. Harvey retrieves the puck, and now looks up ice, fires a pass that Boston almost kept in the zone. Ricochets out to center ice, where Assault takes it. Boston looking to bring it back the other way. They cross the blue line, drop pass, connect. And now on the puck at the top there is Lyons, long shot. Pad save made by Bruinsma. Boston still with it. Down low, they come up top, but then there's Ofiro. Ofiro hands it off. Boston looking to make something happen here. They're out shooting Team Brick 10 to four late in this second period. Team Alberta takes over. And now down the right side with it comes Van Ways. Van Ways dumps it in. Giving chase for Team Alberta is Jet Evans. Evans trying to jar the puck free below the goal line there, battling for it against Assal. But Boston escapes with it, and they bring it up the far side and out to center ice. Boston pokes it forward, potential odd man rush forming. Oh, there's a pass in the middle and a nice defensive play there by Team Alberta to break up a possible three on one. Now here they come back the other way. It's Chudik down the left side, in the middle of the pass. Oh, and just out of the reach of James Butterwick, streaking down the right. Now another chance, Team Alberta down low, up top. Oh, a one-timer by Chudik, just deflected wide. Close calls there for Team Alberta as they look to get on the board. 
So that good defensive play by Team Brick Alberta was actually a back checking forward. Oh, wow. Being Madden Deneau. Madden Deneau showing similar defensive prowess as Philip Deneau, the center for the Los Angeles Kings, who's regularly regarded as one of the league's top defensive forwards. Now here's Chudik down the left side, fires a shot that's blocked away by Dickinson. Out of the puck brought up the near side by Boston. They try to clear, but they can't. Team Alberta presses them back the other way. Sent up the near side. Oh, and O'Gorman couldn't keep it alive. Now it comes up to center ice for Campanale. Campanale down the right, making a move to the outside. Campanale crashes into the end boards off a nice defensive play by Team Alberta. Boston keeps it alive at the point. Bob Rob with a rainbow shot. That's knocked away by Team Alberta. Here comes Team Alberta out to center. Leading the rush there is Huscroft. Huscroft tried a shot. It was taken away by Brackett and Team Boston bringing it back up to center, but Antoniani turns them back. Here's Antoniani on goal. Antoniani! And the save is made by Dickinson, who keeps the puck out of a great rush there by Brody Antoniani. Both of his teammates giving him, both of his defenders giving him a pat on the chest, saying, you saved our bacon. Yeah, my goodness, what a turnover there by Boston, but their goaltender came up big. And as he has all tournament. Absolutely, and Boston making some late changes there. Team Alberta wins the draw. A slap shot there by Antoniotti. Turned aside by the goaltender, Dickinson. Puck loose along the far side. Team Alberta slams it back down below the goal line. Now what's up for grabs along the far side, and now Boston takes control. They bring it out to center ice. That's Brackett down the left side, helped out by Campanale, who dumps it in. And Team Alberta back on it. Brackett has uh, been showing some quick hands all tournament. He's smart. He's a smart player. I like what we've seen from number 11 in white. Now back on it for Team Alberta is Antoniani down the near side. Gets it ahead and now with it is Jollies. Jollies flips it in and look out as that one almost went into the spectator area. Now it rims along the top of the boards and it stays there. My goodness, they're trying to paw it off the top. So, Finally they do. So that's one of the unique quirks about this rink is that you have about five or six inches it's really of dasher wide. board. It's really wide, like my goodness. Now into the middle, here's a chance for Team Alberta. It comes up top, they keep it alive. Bodker at the left point, sends it down low, and Team Alberta's buzzing. Deneau's pass, deflected away from danger, and Boston will get it out to center. It's down the near side, but then comes Brodovsky. Brodovsky trying to chip it forward, taking it away there is Bodker for Team Alberta. And now it's sent along the far side boards where it's kept alive there by McCann for Boston. Team Alberta gets it to the line, not out, kept in there by Lyons. He goes D to D, Afiro with a chance, Afiro through traffic, and a save is made, the rebound, oh look out, it's still loose. And now in the low slot, Team Boston trying to set it home, Lyons shoots, save made there by Bruinsma, and finally he covers up with 52.5 seconds left oh, in this second period. That's an unnecessary penalty to take. It looks yep. like Bodker's heading off, my goodness. Yeah, Bodker it's, giving a two-handed cross check to a player who had tripped over his goalie. Looks like it was Prudovsky who was slammed from behind on the ice there and still laboring a little bit, as indeed it is Luke Bodker who will head off for two minutes or less. I understand you want to protect your goalie, but keep your cooler head, when, especially when you're down. Being on the PK is not a recipe for success for most teams. Well, I, I would say all. Absolutely, yeah. And now Team Alberta will have to kill a penalty here as they already trail by two on the scoreboard. And Archibald has it up top. Archibald dishes it off. It bounces off a stick, but Team Boston retains control. Watson's drive just flutters wide. Up top, the puck is taken there by Archibald. Archibald at the right, manning the line. Hands it off down low to Prudovsky. His shot is deflected on goal by Welby. My goodness, looking for his second tip-in goal of the game. Wow, what hand high there by number 91 in white. Flip those numbers around. Very similar to a Calgary Flames, Matthew Kachuk, who it, you see him out practicing that all pregame. I'm sure that uh, we see the same from Welby. Well, what number does Joe Pavelski wear in Dallas? I believe he wears number Nine. 11 now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like he's a, a tip-in artist too. Welby just putting his hand-eye coordination on full display as we reach the end of this second period. Shots favoring Team Boston, 12 to seven, and they lead on the scoreboard, two to nothing. If I hadn't told you that they'd played earlier today, you wouldn't have known. Oh yeah. They have lots of jump. 
not seeing tired at all. It's been great. It's been absolutely fantastic hockey action. The fans are into it for both teams. Uh, you can be sure that Team Alberta would love to score a goal to get their fans super engaged and super excited and make this place uh, maybe lose a couple of its ceiling panels with how loud the fans would get if they were to score. And nevertheless, it remains a 2-0 lead for Boston after 24 minutes of regulation here at the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Tournament. But we will be back with you, maybe with some highlights if our technology is with us again today. And see, we're getting a nod from our production assistant. So we will be back in about three minutes with your highlights. Absolutely. Mike Gould here alongside Conrad Krausert on ASTV. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll be back with you in just a couple. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment We're here on ASTV at the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Tournament, and uh, I'm Mike Gould here with you as we bring you some of the best highlights from the first two periods of action between the Junior Bruins and Team Brick Alberta. And let's queue up one of the goals to kick things off, as this one appears to be uh, for Boston. They transition the puck up the ice down the right side, and this one came off a bit of a chaotic scramble in the crease. You can see the puck still loose, and it's poked home there by Boston. I believe that was Braden Campanelli who received credit for that one uh, to put Boston up one to nothing. And now we'll take a look at the second Boston goal, which came off a deflection by Chris Welby. We'll bring that one up in just a moment. Team Boston leading two to nothing, and here was the goal that put them up by a pair as it comes up top, and we see the long shot there by Emmett Ofiro that's tipped in front, and that one puts Boston in the driver's seat uh, late in this second period. Now we'll take a look at some of the biggest saves from that, uh, from those first two periods, and first we'll take a look at one of the biggest stops by Brick goaltender Baron Bruinsma, as Team Boston has peppered the Brick side with shots so far in this one, firing 12 in the first two periods. And here's one of the best stops so far. You can see a long stretch pass here connects and down the right side with the puck comes Deacon Brackett. And the big saves, couple of them, were made by Bruinsma to keep uh, Team Alberta within striking distance in this one. And now we'll go back to the other end of the ice where we saw a really nice stop made by number 60, Brody Dickinson for Boston, who uh, hasn't been tested as much as Bruinsma in this one, but he's had to make seven saves and looked super sharp in that second period. And here's the highlight as we see Team Alberta with the puck in the offensive zone, the backhand shot set in front, and Bruinsma had to make a really nice poke check. The rebound just deflected wide off the skate of a Boston player. Well, Mike Gould here with you on ASTV. We'll be joined by Conrad Croucher again shortly to discuss what we expect to see in the third period between these two teams. It's Boston leading Team Brick Alberta 2-0. Thanks for joining us here on ASTV. More at you coming.
Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on-ice coaching propel our students to the next level, both mentally and physically, in a professional environment. All right, uh, whenever, okay, just one sec. Okay, welcome back everybody to the 33rd annual Brick Invitational Tournament here on AAS TV. I'm Mike Gould back with you alongside Conrad Krauserd. And Conrad, who has really stood out to you the most so far? I mean, you are in charge of our three star <laughs> presentations after the end of every game, so. What would you say is uh, what you're leaning towards thus far after 24 minutes of action? So, I mentioned his name a couple of times. You've mentioned his name a couple of times. Quick hands for the Junior Bruins. Number 11, Deacon Brackett. The forward, not the tallest in stature, but certainly plays big and plays big time minutes for the Bruins team. Well, you can talk about players who are maybe smaller in stature. I, I, I think when you discuss players, I think size, people say that a player lacks size. I don't think a player lacks size, he just has different size. And I think that size can be an attribute in many different ways. And I think a player with small size can actually be better than a player with big size in some instances. And uh, that's something that I think works to a player like Brackett's advantage because it gives him a lower center of gravity and allows him to make more moves with the puck on his stick. For sure. And then I also have to say a name that we've been mentioning a lot is Brody Antidiani. Yeah. 91 for Team Brick Alberta. He's everywhere on the ice, earning, as we mentioned, that number of note, number 91. Absolutely. Someone I've also noticed from Team Brick Alberta, number 13, James Butterwick. Yeah, yeah, he's had some good opportunities. Uh, seems to have a good shot on him as well. I mean, you have to understand for viewers and for also for both of us, I mean, this is our first exposure to a lot of these players. This for is a chance for us to see some new talent and evaluate these players on a first opportunity. And, Really, as they say, first impressions are, you know, the most important thing you can have. A good first impression is super, super important. And uh, a lot of these players on both teams are making the most of this opportunity here at West Edmonton Mall. For sure. And I've recognized a couple faces out in the crowd because to give you guys, everybody a little inside baseball, me and Mike both do PA announcing for <laughs> the Alberta Junior Hockey League. I've noticed some people with AJHL jackets already starting to get eyes. Wow. on some of these players. I mean, you look at it, the players in the AJ this year, I mean, we've seen players uh, born in 2004. Uh, that's really the top players in that league, the, the draft eligible ones, the guys like Rieger Lorenz and, and uh, Nick Wolfenberg, uh, but also, you know, the, the players in the league go up to 2002 this year. Mm -hmm. But 
we'll see players in this league, I'm sure, or in this tournament, I'm sure playing in leagues like the AJHL and, you know, as soon as five years away. For sure. And you got to remember, for families watching back at home, especially in Alberta, the goal is the WHL for a lot of these players. Yeah. But there is many different paths to the pro leagues. Look at our Conn Smythe Trophy winner. Played in the AJHL for a year with the Brooks Bandits before going down to the NCAA and played one year in the NCAA and is uh, now probably going to be perennially in the Norris conversation. I, I was just about to mention Kale McCarr. And, you know, you look at the AJ, I think the AJHL is a uh, an area of... I don't know. Uh, I think it's under scouted a little bit sometimes. I think there's a lot of talents in that league because the increasing uh, tendency of players and their representatives to go that direction because that's how they want to go to school. That's the easiest pathway for them to go if they want to uh, go that direction. As we see Team Alberta returning to the ice surface here at West Edmonton Mall. They need two goals to tie this one against the Boston Junior Bruins. Conrad, how are they going to do that? They gotta feed off this fan base. We're now seeing the Alberta flag come out from the fan base. Couple high fives with parents. That's what they need to do. This is something they haven't been able to do. Their fans were loud at the start, but through the second period, they did tend to get a little bit quieter. But sometimes you absorb that energy a little too much. You're taken in by the fans and that turns into pressure. So gotta find that balance. Now, Conrad, you know what I'm going to say right now? Because uh, we're still waiting for this third period to start. I like what Boston's wearing today. I like these uniforms. These Team Alberta jerseys, what do you think? If they had a black helmet, I'd love them. <laughs> you know what? I dig it. I dig it with, even with the white helmet. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a sharp look top to bottom. I, I got to say, I like them a lot more than their away jerseys, which are the Detroit Red Wings retro, the, bar, the candy bars. Oh. But they've got blue pants. Oh, oh, well, that's unique. That's certainly it's, unique. It's representing the colors of the Flames and the Oilers, apparently. Ah, well, there you go. I like the uh, the, the, the outline numbers on the back because they they uh, they blur the line between being aesthetically pleasing and also easy for us to read, which is a big thing you sometimes see missed in some of the jersey design at tournaments like this. And it almost surprises me that the Bruins haven't gone with the black name bar with white lettering. That's kind of cool, yeah, yeah, like like Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we do have the Bruins opening on the power play. Absolutely. So you got to use your momentum from killing this penalty, which you need to do to stay in this game, yep. to propel you further. We'll see Team Alberta's Luke Bodker staying in that box for an additional 104 to begin this third period. The third period being... 15 minutes in duration as compared to 12 minutes, which was the first two frames. And now both teams having a little conference with their respective coaches before we get this third period underway. Looks like we may be having some issues in the timekeeper's box. Oh, well, there you go. That would be problematic as we need those to get this game going underway. The final 15 minutes still ahead of us with Team Alberta needing two goals to tie and three to win. I'm not sure what exactly we are waiting for. Maybe we're waiting for a little bit of water to freeze. Yeah, because it, okay. That's what we're waiting for. The refs are not happy with how swampy it is at the center ice area. Well, I always knew West Edmonton Mall had a water park, but I didn't know it was at the center of the mall. <laughs> I'm just joking. This is a fantastic ice service here at West Ed, but every time you have a little bit of sunlight that's directed onto the ice, it sometimes becomes a little bit more temperamental. Yeah, it, it almost makes me wonder if, I know we don't control the ice crew here at West Evans Mall. They want to flood it a little bit more at night, get a thicker layer, and then just go with dry scrapes. Maybe that would be something to consider as it looks like the players might be preparing to get things started. The referee has his arm up in the air, and both centers are heading to the dot as we will get things underway for this third and final period between these two teams here at West Edmonton Mall. The puck has been dropped and Team Alberta sends it all the way down the ice. So if you're not an avid hockey watcher, you may be wondering why are they caring about how much water's on the ice? If you've ever watched a soccer game where they've played where the grass is still wet and it stops the ball dead, 
it'll slow the puck down a lot. And we want to see the best hockey, see these pucks flying from these young men. Absolutely. And it can be really frustrating if you're trying to pass the puck and it gets caught up in a little pool of water that's still out there. And at least it's not a pool of coffee like we saw yesterday. A fan dropped his coffee on the ice. There's a chance by Boston that's turned aside by Bruinsma. Now well, up top, the puck falls off the player's stick and comes out to center. So while they were resurfacing the ice, after uh, Mike had showed you the highlights, someone almost dropped their Lululemon bag full of goods onto the ice. That would have been something to watch. That would have been uh, not so great. As now the puck comes out to center ice and Team Alberta streaking after it is down the right side after it is Antonioni. Antonioni met there by a couple of Boston players, comes up to the point though, and Morrison sends it down low. Antonioni trying to steal it away, but their first for it for Boston is Camden Lions. Lions on the puck, sends it up the near side where it's just out of the reach there of Ofiro as we're back to five aside hockey. Team Alberta trying to press the issue forward, but Ofiro takes it first. And Lions got another puck up high, right in the soft, fleshy underarm where there is not a ton of padding. And now Team Alberta breaks it up to center. It's Antoniani making moves. Antoniani had it just skitter off his stick. And now it comes back out to center ice where Harvey takes it down the right side. Harvey always stepped on the puck. That was dangerous as he fell to the ice. And now the puck comes back out to center as Asal is after it. Back on it for Team Alberta as Lindbergh. Lindbergh spins away from Asal. Now he takes a tumble. No call on the play. Van Way is after it. He's backed up by Castingay, who brings it down the left. Castingay fires it down low, and Van Ways is after it. Van Way is met there by Lions. Lions pokes it forward, and now Boston looks to bring it out. It's a solid, it knocked off his stick, but he's backed up by his teammate Cullen. Cullen's pass is knocked away there by Forrestal. Forrestal sends it in, goes one on two against the Boston defense, and Boston gets there first. Now it's over at the near side. Team Alberta trying to get it up top, and a shot there by Evans, he fans on it. And Boston back on it. Boston brings it up down the near side. Evans takes over. Here's Evans down the right. Evans making moves to the outside. Evans on goal, the save made there by Dickinson. Tried to cover up the rebound, but it was out of his reach. And now here comes Boston back the other way. Down the right side, it's Watson. Watson had the puck caught up in the referee's skate, and that put his teammate offside. Yeah, Smash Mouth serenades us. It's 12 1 to play in this third period. So, Brody Dickinson might also get extra points in the fashion contest. Rocking, I didn't notice this, but rocking one of our sponsors' gear, True Hockey, one of the presenting sponsors of this tournament, and all of Brody's gear, all that True Hockey. There you go. True, definitely one of the newer brands we've seen coming into the hockey sphere over the last few years. And a lot of people use their gear now, and it's really popular. Yeah, and I think especially for goalies, if I recall correctly, they hired a... Now, a sorry, sorry, Conrad, a, a, con, uh, sorry, a, a hand pass called inside the Team Alberta offensive zone with 11.39 to play in this third period. So, True Hockey is being really mentioned in goaltending gear because they brought the former designer and customizer from CCM over to True. So, a lot of the pros moving to the True gear to stay with that designer. And now the puck dumped in by Team Alberta. Back on it is Bobrov. Bobrov sends it up the near side for McM McMahon. McCann after the puck. Oh, makes a nice move. Here comes McCann down the left side. McCann fires on a nice pad. Save made by Bruinsma. What a rush that was by number seven in white. And but he takes, he takes a, a post, tumble. post yeah. to the ribs. Oh, that's got to hurt as McCann slow to get up and favoring his side. Still, what a rush there by McCann. Go take a breather, get a couple gulps of bio, bio steel. He'll be back out. Boy, we've had a lot of bio steel up here oh. too. We're we're in the sun. We're sweating too. Hard work working these vocal cords. Face off at the neutral zone is won by Team Boston. Bring it down the right side and dump it in. Back on it for Team Alberta is Harvey. Harvey sends it up to Antoniani, who deflects it out to center ice. Now it's Welby on it. Welby looks up ice. Fires a pass, it's deflected in there by Assal. And now Alberta back on it. 
Alberta looking to advance it. It's Antoniani up the near side who chips it out to center. And look out, here comes Butterwick down the right side. Butterwick fires a shot, save the rebound. Oh, it was just out of the reach of his team, Alberta teammate, who goes crashing into the boards. Now look out, here comes Team Boston. Two on two. Down the left side, it's a Saul. But a nice defensive play by there by Antoniani. Takes that rush away. Butterwick, after we mentioned him in the intermission, showing us why he was mentioned in our all-star potential conversation. Yeah. Now he dumps it in, goes off for a change. Team Boston on the puck, looking to bring it out to center. One of their players takes a spill, and there's gonna be a penalty called on the play. It'll be a trip against Team Alberta. Oh, and I, a very, very smart play here from Deneau to try and bait somebody into taking a penalty with him. Gives another extra shove popularized by Brad Marchand. Whenever he takes a penalty, you'll see he'll get right up and close with a player on the other team. Trying to draw some retaliation, perhaps, to make it a four-on-four -four situation. Nevertheless, know the only player sent off, and with 10-18 to go in this third period, as Shania Twain comes over the loudspeakers here at West Edmonton Mall, will have a face-off inside the team Alberta's own. Face off one by McCann, but Team Alberta takes it away. It's sent around the far side. Team Boston looks to keep it in, and they do. Impressive there by Prudovsky. Prudovsky winds up and fires a shot that's blocked on route. Now down low, McCann sends it around the near side for Watson. Up top, it's Archibald on it now. Archibald back for Watson at the top of the left circle. In front, that one caroms into the far corner. Up top, Boston keeps it alive. Archibald fires a shot that deflects on goal. He scores! Archibald makes it three to nothing for Team Boston with 9.49 to play in the third period. We'll see who this ends up going to because Luke Spacito also celebrating like he got a stick on that puck. It remains to be seen. Nevertheless, it's Boston leading by a trio of goals here at a critical time in this one. That might be the dagger in Team Alberta's comeback hopes, but still plenty of time. And that'll be a power play goal. And Team Alberta back with five players on the ice. We remain, or we await the official goal scoring play. Racket streaks after it for Boston. Morrison gets there first for Team Alberta. Helped out there by Jollies. And now after it, down low, Boston takes the puck away. Watson on it. Watson has his stick lifted. And now Team Alberta brings it out to safety. Down the right side comes Evans. Evans shoots it, and that's sticked to the side of the goaltender. Now here's the official goal call. And indeed, it looks like it will be Sam Archibald who gets credit for that third Boston goal. Now Boston. Trying to find that puck down low in the Team Alberta zone. Team Alberta digs it free. They dish it off, and now it's brought out to center ice by Jed Evans. Evans down the right, stops up, makes a nice move, hands it off. Here's a chance for Team Alberta, but look out, a big collision there. Team Alberta still after that loose puck. Oh my goodness, a Team Boston player, that's Lyons, who fell to the ice, and now the Bruins look to bring it out to center, but they're turned back there by Butterwick. Lyons looked like he had some words for that was number nine, Justin Castlegay. It felt he got cross-checked there. And now here's Team Boston bringing it back out to center. And down the right side, trying to make a move there was Assal, who's now slow to get up. Team Boston still after it. Boyle tried to fire it on goal. Team Alberta takes it away, and Assal is slow back to the bench. Team Boston still with it in the offensive zone. Alberta takes it away, and they'll look to clear it out to center, but. Disrupting that breakout attempt was Afiro. Down low, Lindbergh has it for Team Alberta. Taken away by Boyle. Team Alberta players lost the stick. Out in front, there's a chance for McCann. And a save made by Bruinsma of that point blank chance. Making friends. It's like it's Kachuk and Marchand out there. Smiling at each other, getting a few pushes and shoves. I don't see anyone up in the penalty box. So yeah, it looks like it'll just be making friends. Five on five action continues here at West Edmonton Mall with 7.48 to play in this third period. 
Face off coming up in the offensive zone for Team Boston. And there to take it will be McCann. McCann set to take the draw. The right-handed center lining up against Team Alberta's Madden Deneau, who's having some equipment problems now. Trying to get his helmet all tied up. And now it looks like he's resolved the issue. He picks his gloves back up and we'll have a face off inside the Team Boston attacking end. And McCann wins it. Up top, McElhaney sends a shot that deflects off Deneau's stick wide. Now McCann gets dropped to the ice and Deneau tries to dig it free. Now it's taken there by Blazevic. It's sent up to the point, but kept alive by Cullen. Cullen hands it off and now gets it back. Cullen at the right point. Cullen trying to steal it away from Antoniani. Now Antoniani takes it away. He chips it out to center ice, and he gives chase. But back on in the first is McElhaney. He's unable to clear. Puck jarred free for Prudovsky, and Prudovsky trying to clear the zone. It does escape to center ice, and here comes Prudovsky down the left side. Prudovsky is dropped there by Antoniani, and Team Alberta brings it out to center. 10-0, hands it off to Antoniani. Antoniani cuts it into the left. Antoniani lost the handle but gets it back. Sends the pass over to his teammate. That was Van Ways. Alberta still with it down low. Comes up top for Morrison. Morrison fires a shot that's blocked by Boston. Now down low, the Bruins trying to pick it up. And out of there is Lyons. Sends it up the near side. Kept alive there by O'Gorman. And now Boston back on it. Up the near side, it's Campanelli who advances it forward. Antoniani back on it for Alberta. And Team Alberta sends it all the way down the ice. That should be, and will be, an icing call against Team Alberta. 6.22 to play in this second period. Face off up coming inside the Team Brick Alberta zone as they trail by three late in this final frame. It's tough to take an icing call when you're trying to push back, and get on the scoreboard, but Sometimes a necessary evil. Face off one by Team Boston, but Team Alberta quickly takes it away and they get it, try to get it out to center, but Watson stands tall. Watson on the puck making moves. Watson couldn't get it on goal. Now it's Campanelli on it. Campanelli helped out by Watson. Evans takes it away for Team Alberta. Evans backhands it off the boards and now it's taken by Team Boston out at center. Watson tries to chip it to the center. Bracken now down the right side. Bracken still has the puck. Now it's knocked away from him by Chudik. Watson trying to find it. It's stuck under a Team Alberta player. Now a shot there by Bracken. Sails high and wide. Bobrov in the direction of Bracken. It missed him and Team Alberta back on it. Sent up the near side and out to center where it's taken by Bobrov. Now a bit of a sloppy change there by Team Alberta. Almost called for too many men on the ice, but now it's Lindbergh who takes it back in his own zone. Lindbergh out to center, received there by Jollies. Jollies down the right side. Jollies stops up, and Boston takes it away. Out to center ice, it's Brackett. Brackett lost the handle, and on it for Team Alberta is Butterwick. Hands it off to Jollies. Jollies through the middle with the puck. Jollies fires a shot and a block there by Boston. Now it's Butterwick who bounces it off the boards in the direction of Forrestal. Forrestal couldn't settle it down, and Boston has it now. Skating out to center ice is Lyons, who makes a nice move. Lyons pokes it forward, and back on it for Team Alberta is Harvey, who goes D to D. Oh, Gorman, helped out there by Deno. Deno dishes it off, and now here's Team Alberta out at center. Butterwick down the right side. Butterwick cut to the middle. Butterwick lost control, and Lyons pushes him off the puck. Now out at center, it's taken there by Morrison. Morrison hands it off. Down the left side, now comes Welby. Pardon me, Antoniani. And now it's dumped in. Team Boston back on it. And with there is Alfiro. Hands it off and now dropped to the ice is Asal. Puck still loose below the goal line. Both teams trying to take it free here. Team Alberta with it below the goal line. They bank it up top, but Boston takes it away. Now it's received by the Alberta defense. Morrison sends it down low. and. It's up for grabs along the near side. Kept into the point. No, Morrison couldn't keep it in. Morrison at center ice. Hands it off to Van Ways, who dumps it in. 
team Boston back on it. Sends out of the point, kept in by Morrison. Long shot deflected wide off the skate of Lions. Team Boston to the point, not out, kept in there. Huscroft below the goal line, being hassled there by Irwin. And now it comes to Spacito down the right side. Spacito out to center, dumps it in, gets past Blazevic, no icing on the play. Over to the near side, it's taken by Lindbergh. Now on it is Castengay. Castengay out at center, crosses the blue line, down on the left side, fires a shot, and a pad safe made there by Dickinson. Now the puck's still up for grabs inside the Boston zone. We'll see who comes away with it. Up top, a long shot there by Alberta. Blocked away, Evans on it again now. Evans down low, pass toward the side of the net. Jamming away his team, Alberta. It's still loose and finally covering it up is Dickinson. Now we might need the referees to come to the, come to the box here because we've been having issues getting the scoreboard up. So we're sending one of the Ice Palace employees across the ice. Yeah, we're not even sure how much time is left in regulation here. It might be around two and a half minutes. It's still Boston up three to nothing over Team Brick Alberta. And it will be two minutes and 40 seconds as we have a bit of a delay here as the officials try to sort out the scoreboard issue here at West Edmonton Mall. Of course, Mike. It's always our first game that we seem to have one of these technical issues, whether that's with the Zamboni or ice resurfacing machine in our day one. And now the scoreboard. Well, hopefully this is something we can get resolved relatively quickly and get this game back underway between teams Boston and Alberta. And it's been, it's been a close game. I think it's closer than the scoreboard would indicate. But honestly, it's truly been a game that I think scoreboard doesn't necessarily reflect the truth of it. 2.40 to play here in regulation time. We'll see what happens with Team Boston still leading three to nothing. Their goaltender Brody Dickinson having an excellent performance here on this Thursday afternoon and we'll see what remains in store for him. Out getting some high fives from the Boston faithful. I gotta say this, goalies generally viewed as the eccentrics of a hockey team and Based on his style alone, I think that is true with the Bruins goaltender. Well, he looks fantastic with those pads, which I'm sure are brand new. They look like it. And uh, just a tremendous performance from number 60 in white in this one. So, Mike, I'm going to mention TikTok. I know you're not a big TikTok guy, but one of the things that I've seen on TikTok is goaltenders taking magic erasers to their pads to erase the puck marks on them to make them look newer. Well, that is something. <laughs> it's it's certainly different. It's not something I would have th thought of. I know we probably have some hockey parents who are probably going to try that now to scour the puck marks off to uh, get their pads back in for resale. Well, I just had my head shaved, so I look a bit like Mr. Clean, but uh, we can talk about magic erasers all you want. <laughs> have a lot of Magic erasers at my house. Boy, they're good for scrubbing all my countertops. We have our scoreboard back. 2.47 is one on the clock with Boston still leading three to nothing. Looks like they're still working on fixing the shots on gold counts too. It might be Okay, six. yeah, they had some shots that weren't added that they're just adding on. It right appears now. to be 16 to 13 in favor of the Bruins. And the Alberta faithful have gotten off their seats, raised their voice to try and encourage this team to get on that scoreboard, break that goose egg. Face off, one by Team Alberta in the offensive zone, and on it down low is Trudek. Gets it up top for Morrison. Morrison goes D to D over to the left side for Lindbergh. Lindbergh down low, takes a tumble, oh my. Hope he's all right, he's back to his feet now. And Boston, after the puck at center ice, here comes Watson all alone. Watson, and a save made there by Bruinsma. Oh, an excellent stop there by number 32 in black. Tried to go five hole, but that was promptly closed. And now Watson after it again down low for Boston, helped out there by Brackett. Watson trying to dig it free, and he did for a moment, but now Lindbergh takes over for the Brick team. 
just had that wonderful device disconnected sound play around the rink here. Hopefully it's not our scoreboard again. It appears to still be up with less than two minutes remaining in this third period with Team Boston still leading three to nothing. Down low, Team Boston trying to dig it free. And it's still up for grabs along the near side boards. Now Boston takes it away. That's McCann after that puck. Alberta now on it. With it through center comes Keston Gay. But they're going to say that Evans entered the zone just slightly offside. So a faceoff will up come in the neutral zone with 1.37 to play in this third period. Team Alberta was looking to become the first team to get to that 3-0 mark. But it does look like the string of two and ones will continue at least this game. Other team looking to go to 3-0, the Toronto Bulldogs. We've seen a lot of great stuff from the Bulldogs so far in this tournament. Another team to watch so far and keep your eyes peeled. They'll be back on ASTV very soon. Now Boston, two on one, in front, they score! Pradovsky receives the pass and flips it over the pads of Baron Bruinsma to make it four to nothing for Team Boston. Nice goal in the counter attack. And as I said, these players have all played earlier today, not having the benefit of waiting till later on to get that nap in. Apparently they had an hour between games. So, got to say something for the young players here. Got to get off the ice after that extended celebration. Yeah, Pradovsky is pumped up. The referees are smiling. They see the players having a lot of fun and Boston leading by a quartet of goals here late in this third period. Boston trying to make it five. They push it into the offensive zone and Asal is after it. Team Alberta takes over and they'll look to clear. Morrison dishes it off down the left side and dumping it in there is Butterwick. Butterwick gives chase. Irwin gets it there first for Boston. Rims it around the near side. Alberta keeps it alive. Morrison tried to send it down low. Received there and he gets it back. Can't keep it in though. Morrison now dumps it back in. McElhaney after it for Team Boston with 45 seconds remaining in this third period. So I think with that goal, Brent Ferdowski heads to the tie for the lead in goal scored this tournament. Look out, a turnover. Ben Ways shoots, and a glove save made there by Dickinson, who keeps it a 4 0 game with 32.4 seconds remaining in this third period. And almost gives the Patrick Waugh salute after the save. Gets his glove up in the air, making sure we notice that the puck is stuck safely inside. Well, only one thing still left to decide here with 32.4 seconds Don't left to go it, in Mike. regulation. Oh, I won't. And it's sent into the near side corner. Bracket takes a tumble. Team Alberta takes over. Team Alberta trying to get it out in front. And down low, it's Boston who takes it away. Bobrov up the near side. That's kept in by Team Alberta. 16 seconds on the clock. They send it down low. Archibald on it for the Bruins. Rims it around and on it there first for Team Boston is Welby. Welby gets it successfully out to center ice. Four seconds, three seconds. And Brody Dickinson, you have yourself a shutout. The Boston Junior Bruins win four to nothing. You know, he was very much in consideration for one of the three stars. At the end of the day, he will not receive one of the three stars, but certainly a standout performance amongst a bunch of standout performances here for the Junior Bruins. Dickinson making 13 saves in the clean sheet for Boston. Team Brick, a goaltender, Baron Bruins must stopping 14 of the 18 he faced. And at the end of the day, it is a four to nothing final in favor of Boston. And since this is an invitational tournament, we will have our handshake line. One of the best parts of hockey at all levels, in my opinion. Absolutely. The sportsmanship. Absolutely. And the goaltenders leading the charge for both teams. And we'll see the three stars presented here very shortly as my broadcast partner, Conrad Krauser, signs off for now. Uh, you'll hear from him more in a moment. Mike Gould here sticking with you on ASTV for the time being as we wrap things up here from West Edmonton Mall. We'll be uh, sticking with you here on ASTV for the rest of the day here at the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Tournament. We're so excited and so happy to have you with us. And 
the three stars coming up next before we sign off for good and bring you our next game on the schedule. Final score one more time, Boston four, Team Brick Alberta zero. Posting a 13 save shutout is the goaltender Brody Dickinson wearing number 64 Team Boston. And my broadcast partner Conrad Krausert, the selector of the three stars for this game. And we'll see him shortly here on ASTV to talk to the three star selections about their respective performances in this one. Here at West Edmonton Mall, it's been such a pleasure to bring you this one with all the fans sticking around to support their respective teams. The atmosphere in here was palpable. Would have been something to see Team Alberta get on the board just to see what the reaction would have been like from their fan base here. But nevertheless, can't take anything away from Brody Dickinson. What a fantastic shutout performance for him. So happy to be with you here on ASTV, and we're standing by for the three-star presentations. Okay, here we go. It's Nick Benino. Mike check, Mike check. We can hear Mike you. We can hear you. There's Nick Benino. Part of the Pittsburgh Penguins Stanley Cup Championships back a few years ago, and part of the Haglin Bonino Kessel line that was so successful for the Penguins. Justin Castingay, the recipient of the third star award for the Team Brick Alberta in this game. And now the next two will both be from the Bruins. Chris Welby with a fantastic deflection goal uh, for Boston in this one, named the second star of the game. And Sam Archibald named the first star of the game for Boston. Well, I'm Mike Gould here on ASTV. Thank you all for joining us for the play-by-play -play portion of our broadcast. And we'll throw it now down to the uh, other part of our broadcast facility where my broadcast partner Conrad Krauser will present the three stars of the game. Fans. All right, hockey fans. I'm joined here by your third star, Justin Castlegay. Justin, obviously not the results you're looking for, but you are certainly noticeable out there. Looking more like number 19 for the Calgary Flames. Matthew Kachuk making lots of friends. How do you like that comparison? Uh, well, I think it's good. I think our team could have uh, won there, but we can't win it all. Can't, can't win them all. Sometimes the puck doesn't bounce your way. But what was the message coming into that third period in the locker room after coming out of the locker room now, rather? Uh, well, we just had to, we had to go. There was no giving up. We, we were down by three goals, but the Oilers scored four goals in one minute, so there's no difference. And there certainly was a lot of push and a lot of heart shown. Obviously, don't go to 3-0, and but lots, there's still another game later today for you guys, so I'll let you go get ready for that one. Have a great day. Now I'm joined by Chris Welby. Chris, another goal in this game for you and a complete team effort. I, I didn't bring your goaltender out here as one of the three stars, but obviously you guys played well in front of them to help get that shutout. What does that mean to you as a whole team? You know, we've been working on playing as a team all season and we've really put a lot of time into it. And you know, we just we just put our A effort down and did, did the best we could. 
For sure, and you did your best against a really good team. Obviously, Team Alberta coming in undefeated. What does it mean to put that blemish on their record for you? You know, we knew we could beat these guys. Um, we knew that we hadn't played our best hockey yet, and I think this was our def definitely our best game. Perfect, and that was your second game of the day, so I'll let you get back to the locker room and uh, get some rest in you before the game tomorrow. And of course, your first star, defenseman number 19, Sam Archibald. So Sam, you weren't on the roster to start this tournament for us, but you're here and you had a great game out there. What does it mean to come in and play out on this ice service and as a defense core, I'm sure you guys take pride in that zero on the scoreboard. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun to play here, fun with all like the crowd, fun to be near like all our uh, parents and to put up a zero is really nice against a good team. For sure. And you said, as both of you guys have said, huge compliments to Team Alberta. But you got to be huge compliments to you guys. You came out with a lot of jump in the second game of the day with only an hour between games. Is that something you guys are used to or is that something you had to adjust to? Uh, we've been playing a lot of tournaments this year. I usually adjust the two games well. Um, glad to get the second one. Yeah, and of course, unfortunately, couldn't pick up the first one. But... Getting that so that two and one has to be something special. But I'll let you guys go, and I'll let you go get ready. Get to have some rest and maybe see a little bit of Edmonton. Thank you. All right. So I want you to run down all the teams that you've played for and why you're here in Edmonton to watch the Brick Tournament. Do we have that much time here? <laughs> I, I, we have all the time in the world. Yeah. But uh, why don't we talk about this season, obviously played with the Sharks. Not quite getting to the playoffs, but I'm sure you know a lot of the guys who are battling. And it starts even at this age, learning how to battle, learning how to get through these important tournaments. Yeah, uh, you know, not the best year for us. We were kind of hanging in there um, right up to the break there in February and then just couldn't sustain it down the uh, to the end there. But one of my best buddies, Cagliano, got traded uh, uh, at the deadline and ended up winning the Cup, one of the best uh, most professional guys I've ever played with, so uh, absolutely thrilled for him, was following along pretty closely, and like you said, uh, the hockey out here is super impressive. I mean, they're 11 years old, and, and the skills, the way they can skate, it's uh, the game's obviously getting younger, but uh, I don't realize this this much younger. Yeah, so Cogs means a lot to this city here in Edmonton, spent some years here, but you also have links to Edmonton and Alberta. One of the most famous hockey car calls in my mind, made by my friend, Counter Ryan Singh. Does that memory still play in your head? The Benino, 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 Benino? I don't, uh, yeah, it would be impossible if it didn't. Uh, you know, and, and just getting to know uh, Hunter Ryan after the, the cup and, and the runs in Pittsburgh, uh, just a great guy. He wrote an awesome book, and um, yeah, I guess it, it did originate uh, from his mind in Alberta, so um, happy for all his success. But yeah, that was a pretty good call that kind of put us both on the map, it seems like. Yeah, now I just need to make a call here while we're watching some of these young guys to get on that level. Oh, all, and it could be any of these kids. Like, the level of hockey here in Edmonton at the Brick Invitational, super high. Yeah, like, you, like I said earlier, I'm just super impressed by not just the guys, but the atmosphere here. We've never really come to the Brick to watch. Uh, one of my best buddies from back home, uh, Paul Spazito, his son Luke is on the Junior Bruins, and um, getting to just watch him and I think he tipped in uh, one of the goals today, so uh, I was pretty excited to see that. I know he was there high-fiving, and it's, it's electric in here. And these kids, uh, to play in front of hundreds of fans like this, um, you know, it's probably, you can't really get that anywhere else. For sure, and the 7,000 of us tuning in online as well. So, so but thank you so much for joining me. And we're going to take a little bit of a break, let me and I co-host, relax our voices a little bit. But thank you so much for joining us in our post game, and hopefully enjoy the rest of the hockey.